Welcome to a new Tech Encyclopedia voiced article on the ZSU-57-2 in Yugoslavian service by Marko Pantelic. As always, we would like to thank our patrons for their continued support. In a search to equip its army with modern anti-aircraft vehicles, the Yugoslovenska Narodna Armia, the Yugoslav People's Army, abbreviated JNA, High Command, decided to negotiate the purchase of over 100 copies of the Soviet ZSU-57-2. These vehicles arrived in the 1960s and would be used to equip armored and tank brigades. The ZSU-57-2 would see action during the chaotic Yugoslav Wars in the 1990s. A few vehicles would remain in service up to 2005 in the Serbian Army and 2006 in the armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina before being finally retired from service. History. After the Second World War, the process of building and arming the new Yugoslav People's Army was underway. Despite attempts to develop domestic tanks, this was not possible, so the JNA was forced to acquire new equipment from abroad. Initially, the Soviet Union was the main supplier. However, during the so-called Tito-Stalin split that started in 1948, the JNA turned to Western countries and managed to sign the Mutual Defense Aid Program, abbreviated MDAP, with the United States. Thanks to the MDAP, the JNA received, during 1951 through 1958, plenty of new military equipment, including a small number of M15 anti-aircraft half-tracks. The JNA also made a few of its own anti-aircraft vehicles by mounting captured German anti-aircraft guns, mostly 20mm ones, on available trucks. While the M15 was a properly designed military vehicle, it was outdated by the 50s. The truck versions were simple modifications and in reality of little combat value as they had no armor protection nor sophisticated tracking sites. The truck version appears to have only been used in military parades. For nearly a decade, these vehicles were the only mobile anti-aircraft vehicles available in the JNA. For this reason, JNA officials were desperate to find more modern anti-aircraft vehicles. As the political tensions with the Soviet Union began to relax after Stalin's death in 1953, the possibility of purchasing new Soviet military equipment emerged again. For this reason, during the early 60s, the JNA managed to buy over 100 Soviet ZSU-57-2 anti-aircraft vehicles. Ironically, in their desperation to find more modern anti-aircraft vehicles, the JNA actually bought a vehicle that was already becoming obsolete. Soviet ZSU-57-2 The ZSU-57-2 was designed by the artillery designer Vasily Garbin shortly after World War II. The first prototype was completed in the summer of 1950, and the production began in 1955. ZSU stands for Zenitnaya Samokhadnaya Ustanovka, meaning anti-aircraft self-propelled mount, and 57-2 stands for the fact that it was armed with two 57mm cannons. This vehicle was built using a modified chassis of the new T-54 tank. The modifications of this chassis included reducing the road wheels per side to four and using lighter armor. On top of the new T-54 chassis, a new open-top turret was added. This turret was powered by an electric motor with hydraulic speed gears. The turret traverse speed was 36 degrees per second. Inside the turret, two 57mm S68 cannons were mounted. Each cannon had a rate of fire of 240 rounds per minute. For these guns, both fragmentation and armor-piercing ammunition was available. The ammunition load was 300 rounds, with 176 rounds stored in the turret and the remainder in the hull. The effective range when used against flying targets was 6 kilometers. To efficiently operate the vehicle, six crew members were needed, commander, gunner, loader, driver, and two sight adjusters. The ZSU-57-2 was powered by a V-54 12-cylinder diesel engine providing 520 horsepower. Despite the weight of 28 tons, thanks to the strong engine, the maximum speed was 50 kilometers an hour. With a fuel load of 850 liters, the operational range was 420 kilometers. The ZSU-57-2 had serious firepower that could easily destroy any aerial target, but had many issues. The greatest weaknesses were the lack of modern rangefinding and radar equipment, 
the impossibility of engaging targets at night, the lack of protection for its crew being open-topped, and low ammunition count. While many would be sold to Warsaw Pact countries like East Germany, Romania, and Poland, its service within the Soviet army was limited. By the end of the 50s, it was mostly replaced by the ZSU-23-4. In JNA Service In October 1962, a JNA military delegation was sent to the Soviet Union to negotiate the purchase of new military equipment and supplies. During this visit, the Soviets presented the ZSU-57-2 to the Yugoslav delegation. The delegation was highly interested in it, and during the following month, an agreement was reached for the purchase of 40 vehicles and 50,000 rounds of ammunition. The price for each vehicle, with two spare barrels, was 80,000 US dollars. By the end of 1963, the shipment for the first group was completed. The following year, 16 more vehicles were purchased, followed by an additional 69 in 1965, for a total of 125 vehicles. Some sources vary, saying 120. The Soviets were somewhat confused when the JNA delegation asked for more ZSU-57-2 vehicles during 1965. While the Soviets were willing to sell their older and obsolete equipment, there were no more ZSU-57-2s available. By that time, the majority of ZSU-57-2s were either sold or given to other Warsaw Pact allies, with a small number preserved for military parades. Due to the small number acquired by the JNA, the ZSU-57-2 was used to equip armored brigades, armored regiments, and tank brigades, with smaller numbers used as training vehicles. The armored brigades and regiments were each equipped with six ZSU-57-2s and one M3A1 scout car that served as a command vehicle. Tank brigades were equipped with two batteries of four vehicles each. During the 70s, the JNA anti-aircraft units were equipped with more modern Strela 1M surface-to-air missile system vehicles. For this reason, new mixed anti-aircraft units were formed, which consisted of two 12-vehicle batteries of ZSU-57-2s and one 6-vehicle Strela 1M battery. During its nearly 30-year-long career in the JNA, no attempts were ever made to increase the effectiveness of this vehicle. While more modern equipment was eventually acquired, like 30mm Praga vehicles, the ZSU-57-2 would never be truly replaced. While there were plans that by the year 2000, all available anti-aircraft vehicles would be replaced by 40mm weapon systems, due to a lack of funds and the breakup of Yugoslavia, this was never achieved. Prior to the breakup of Yugoslavia, the ZSU-57-2 was never used in any combat operations and was mostly used in military exercises and some parades. During the Yugoslav Wars At the start of the Yugoslav War in 1991, there were still 110 operational ZSU-57-2 vehicles. Due to their small numbers, they were quite uncommon on the battlefields. In most cases, individual vehicles were used in combat, while in rarer cases, small units were formed as supporting elements of other units. As the usage of aviation in the Yugoslav War was limited by all sides, the ZSU-57-2 was often used in a fire support role. Thanks to its firepower and high elevation, it could be used effectively against enemy forces which were hiding in larger buildings during urban combat. The best example for this can be seen during the Croatian attempt to storm the JNA Anti-Aircraft School Center in Zadar. The Croatian forces were taking fire positions in the surrounding buildings. Thanks to the ZSU-57-2's high elevation, they could quickly be neutralized by short bursts. Another example of this was the use of a single ZSU-57-2, nicknamed by its crew Strava, meaning horror or dread in English, belonging to the 2nd Osrin Brigade, operating in the Krivaya Valley, there, the ZSU-57-2 proved to be an excellent support vehicle in engaging the enemy forces in the hilly terrain. In July of 1995, forces of Republika Srpska, with support of a few ZSU-57-2s, engaged the Bosnian 28th Division. One ZSU-57-2 was destroyed and one was captured and then immediately put to use by the Bosnian forces against the former owner. While the majority of the ZSU-57-2 self-propelled anti-aircraft guns would be operated by the JNA and Republika Srpska armies, 
smaller numbers would be captured by the Croatian and Slovenian forces as well. In an attempt to increase protection, at least one vehicle used by the army of the Republika Srpska was equipped with a top cover. In addition, this vehicle had several spare ammunition boxes added to the front glasses armor. After the War After the war, the ZSU-57-2 was operated for a limited time by the former Yugoslav republics of Slovenia, Croatia, and Bosnia. After withdrawal of the JNA forces from Slovenia, some 22 ZSU-57-2 self-propelled anti-aircraft guns were left behind. These remained in use by the Slovenian army up to the end of the 1990s, when all were removed from service. The Croatians managed to capture a few ZSU-57-2s during the war, but their use after the war was probably limited. The Republika Srpska operated a small number of such vehicles. In 2006, the Army of Bosnia and Republika Srpska were united into a single army force. At that time, there were six ZSU-57-2s which were withdrawn from service. The ZSU-57-2 remained in use for the longest time with the army of the new Savezna Republika Yugoslavia, the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, abbreviated SRJ. The depleted number of ZSU-57-2s would again see combat action during the NATO intervention in Yugoslavia in 1999. By that time, only two units, the 36th and 252nd Armored Brigades, still operated the ZSU-57-2. The 36th Armored Brigade was tasked with defending a 70-kilometer-long defense line from any possible NATO advance through Hungary or Croatia. Its ZSU-57-2 was used in the anti-aircraft defense of northern Serbia against the NATO bombing raids. Due to the extensive NATO air presence in this area, the 36th Armored Brigade used a large number of dummy wooden mock-ups, false firing positions, tank engine temperature imitation techniques, and other improvisations in order to fool NATO forces. While the ZSU-57-2, due to their general obsolescence, did not have any success against NATO aviation, the 36th Armored Brigade did manage to preserve almost all of its equipment. The second unit to use this vehicle was the 252nd Armored Brigade, initially stationed at the city of Krojevo. When NATO started a bombing campaign against Yugoslavia, the 252nd Armored Brigade was surprisingly moved by train to Kosovo and Medohija. There, the unit reported to have problems with the equipment and vehicles that were previously placed in storage. By the end of the 1999 war, only one ZSU-57-2 was lost. Some 32 vehicles were reported to still be operational by 2005. By that time, they were deemed obsolete and all were eventually scrapped. Surviving Vehicles While over 100 were purchased from the Soviet Union, only a few have survived to this day. One can be found in the Kozara Bosnian Military Museum in Kozara. At least two are in Slovenia, with one at the Pivka Military History Park. A ZSU-57-2 is in the Military Museum in Vukarov, Croatia. Remains of damaged ZSU-57-2s were located in Kosovo and Medohija. Conclusion Ironically, in the search for a modern anti-aircraft vehicle, the JNA actually obtained the obsolete ZSU-57-2. Until being supplemented by Praga anti-aircraft vehicles, the ZSU-57-2 represented the backbone of the JNA mobile anti-aircraft defense. Unfortunately, though intended to protect Yugoslavia from any external air force threats, it saw action against the people it was intended to defend. During the breakup of Yugoslavia, Despite the small numbers available, the ZSU-57-2s would nevertheless see combat action in a new role of fire support vehicle. While of little combat value in contrast to other more modern and radar-equipped self-propelled anti-aircraft guns, it nevertheless had an exceptionally long career of over 40 years. That is all for this article. Please check back to our website, where we will be posting new articles on the regular. If you would like to support the work we do, please consider subscribing or donating through PayPal or Patreon. To keep up with the articles we post, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, and our community Discord channel. Until next time, keep us in your sights.